quick introduction of myself um, and I'll share, I've got a slideshow, so I'm going to start with sharing that, but let's see if I can get it on. And so there's a few things I've got. Cool. Let's see if everyone can see. Can everyone see uh, my shared screen? Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, if you could all mute, that would be great. Uh, rules of engagement I'd like to play today, if that's all right with you guys is um, if you've got any questions, if you want to drop it, drop it in the chat area, I'll then answer those as I go along verbally. Uh, there'll be a, a question and answers at the end. Um, also make sure you have some coffee and tea to make yourself awake. It's not wine o'clock, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, yeah, any questions as we go along, please drop them in the chat and I'll make sure I can try and answer all of them. Um, this is only a two hour session. And I've got to warn you that, um, you know, two hours on social media is not a lot. I mean, you really need like four days on Facebook to, to really get this, this stuff going. Um, so that's my kind of introduction on, on timings. We're going to be finished at 12 o'clock. Um, please ask any questions as we go along. Uh, and right there, where's the slide? That's the one. Um, and what else other questions can I put in here? Um, so the, how I've worked this, I've kind of thought, right, shall I give you six things to learn or shall I just give you everything? And I've said, right, I'll just give you everything. Um, so there's a, a lot of stuff I'm going to pass over to you. Please make sure you have a pen and paper uh, and write lots of stuff down. I do quite a lot of workshops. Once someone told me they got not just lots of notes, but two kilograms of notes the other day. So start writing. Uh, lots. If you need a pen and paper, I'm over to St. David's. I've got some spare ones. Um, so that's the kind of introduction of the workshop. I've got slides. I've got websites to show you. Uh, there's lots of tips and tricks. There's lots of things that maybe challenge you. Um, some of my responses to your stuff in the chat area may be um, it's, a, it's a long answer. And if you go to my, my knowledge comes from um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube stuff. I read a lot. Uh, and the difficulty with all of social media is social media is changing every four hours. Facebook is changing. They work on four hour iterations They're, we are the guinea pigs um, on all social media. So they'll move a button and, you know, you'll open it up on your phone and you'll have a look at it and go, oh, OK, it's changed a little bit. But you'll straight away go, oh, there's the post. I'll start reading and you just start scrolling again. So it is a massive topic. It's just a case of me passing you over stuff that you can use, which will last a period of time. Um, so what else have I got here? So about me, myself, and look at the company. It's where we're depth. We established in 97. We know quite a lot of stuff. Uh, I would class myself as a specialist generalist um, because that makes life easier. It means I, that's my get out of jail, I suppose, um, just in case someone asks me any difficult questions. Um, so we know a lot of stuff. I've launched lots of websites. I deal with a lot of people. or We deal with a lot of people as well as charities. We deal with people like Paul Story, uh, Prostate Wales, um, Football Beyond Borders, which is a London charity to get kids off the street. Lots of stuff like that. So we've got a lot of experience. Predominantly, we are, um, we are business orientated. So some of the stuff is, will be used as an example, but this is still steered towards you guys. Um, yes, we've got satellite offices in a few places. Um, I've also got at the bottom here a hashtag, and I'll go over hashtags later. But if you are going to talk about this, where if you want to promote yourselves, uh, what you can do is take a picture of the screen on the slide, make sure I'm smiling. There are some horrific pictures on Twitter, um, and put it up on, on Twitter or Facebook, and then use the hashtag uh, TFCS, uh, TFC Social Learning. Uh, at, and put at, at web adept if you want but uh, what will happen is I'll monitor that and at the end of this I'll share it out as well so it's just a kind of idea of promoting yourself so some of the stuff we'll be covering today is um, why you social um, and I'd like to bring it back to basics so everyone has some foundations on all of this uh, growing your growing your community kind of tips uh, tips and tricks on how to get your community, how to get more people involved with it. Uh, the other side is audience. Um, who are your audience is, is one question a lot of people don't actually think about. What do they want to see? It's, it's quite interesting how a lot of people forget about that part of it. Uh, and what they do is they, they just talk about, oh, let's just tell them that. Let's just tell them that. 
it's better to ask your even go to your audience maybe if you have a chance to have a chat to them say do you follow us on facebook would what do you want to see on what do you find interesting on our on our facebook or or social media accounts um, we'll look at content, what kind of content you can put up there, and hopefully you can go away and make a list of some of the content. It is easier, I know some of you may be working by yourselves, but it is easier if you work with a few people so you can have a bit of a brainstorming session. Uh, timing, what time to put your post up. You know, me putting up a post now in my environment would be a complete waste of time because everybody in my world, in the business world, is, is at work. And hopefully they're not looking at their, their phone. So it's choosing timings. Um, I was dealing with Planet many years ago where uh, the person that was running it said that uh, when she got up in the morning, she posted on Twitter, but she was just getting nothing. And the first question I asked her was, what time do you get up in the morning? She said, five o'clock. I said, not every man and beast is up at that time, you know. Um, so think about the time. When do your audience want to see the posts? And I'll show you how to schedule, so or, or teach you how to sh schedule. So in other words, you can write a post now and it can go up on Friday evening or Sunday afternoon or those kind of things. A lot of this is trial and error. There is no perfect, you know, just post at 10 o'clock, it's fine. Everyone will see it and you'll get this, it's the holy grail. It isn't that. You've got to eke out that holy grail. And that holy grail is asking your audience who they are, uh, what do they want to see? What time do they look at, pick up their phone? Or what time do they pick up their tablet? What, when do they look at Facebook? And sometimes people say, oh, every now and then. You go, hmm, when about? Quite often, I mean, in everyone's environment, a lot of times people will use social media between uh, eight, and, eight and 10, let's say. And quite often, if, as it's win when winter comes along, it's earlier. So I call it, as the sun goes down, the phone comes up. Um, so people then start using social media. People multitask as well, or multi-fail. So they, they watch TV while looking through Facebook. So quite often they're not concentrating. So the content you've got to put up has to be engaging enough to make them go, oh, I'm not going to watch that. I'm, oh, that's interesting. You know, how can you stimulate someone to actually go, wow, that's cool. So it's thinking about the content that goes up there thinking about making sure that the content has a good picture or there's a video or there's something in there which is engaging. Um, if you're just going to use it as a, I'm just going to throw any old stuff up there, people aren't in that frame of mind. Your frame of mind when you're watching TV is, you know, flicking through, flicking through um, other people's posts or reading, not even reading, which is why Instagram has, has, has got a, a big following because we are, dare I say, becoming stupider because we like to see images rather than read text. So it's the images, it's the, the videos, it's the clips and those kind of things which, which um, will help you. Um, we'll also go over great little tools to use, um, uh, measurement, measuring your success as well. There's lots of ways of seeing, is it working or isn't it working? Uh, and then obviously at the end, there's a and a uh, I put the hashtag at the bottom, so if you want to use it as we go along, shoot away. Uh, outcomes of today, which is always important. There's nothing worse. I've, been, I've, done, I've watched so many, uh, so many tutorials, and I used to go to lots of exhibitions, and I'd write all these notes down, and I'd come home, and I'd put it down, and I'd feel all good about it. And then about three years later, I'd find my notes and go, hmm, I haven't implemented any of those. So my recommendation to you guys is to write down as much as you can today, but maybe highlight or star five things you can do in seven days. If they're not done in seven days, they'll be forgotten or you won't actually action them. And it's a case of while, uh, you know, while you've got the motivation, just go in and do some of this work afterwards. Um, there is a lot of information. Hopefully you've got a bucket of ice to put your head in afterwards to calm down the brain cells. But um, let's, yeah, let's see how it goes on and uh, see how it goes. So, why use social media for, for the community? It's a simple question. It's going back to the real basics. Um, and it's really because this is your new business card, especially, you know, last year we were all told to go and do some professional hiding in our houses. So what did we do? As we went into our houses, we picked up our devices or we picked up our iPhones or opened up our computers and this is how we communicate. Some people hated it, but if you think about it, the, the doctors, they literally went online within 48 hours. Now, if we didn't have 
a pandemic of anything like this, it would have probably taken four years of meeting for the meeting of the it's public sector. So it would have taken years of, is it secure and all the rest of it. Literally all doctors did surgeries online within 48 hours, which also opened up the whole environment. It made us more computer savvy. You know, ask yourself two years ago, would you ever have been on a screen watching some guy waving his hands around? Um, probably not. You would have gone, no, I'll go to a classroom. Whereas now we've kind of got used to it. It's ingrained in us. So therefore we're used to going onto Google and looking for things. So, and social media is part of that. Social media helps with this part of it. How does social media work with the whole environment? I'll just enlarge this a little bit so you can see it a bit more. Social media is just one element of digital. Um, and social media is where, let's get rid of those lines. Um, social media is at, at three o'clock on, on my screen, hopefully the same on yours. Uh, and social media is, is a short concentration area where what you're trying to do is stimulate someone to take an action. And that stimulation has to be quick. Um, so therefore, whatever you post up needs to be really good uh, and short and sharp. You know, think about what state of mind someone is in when they're in a social media world, uh, uh, when they've got their phone in front of them. They're, they're looking for an interesting picture. They're looking for a competition or it's, it is the selfish world in many ways because it's my phone and I'm looking at what I want to look at. So it, it is that, that selfish world. So you've got to appeal to that selfishness and say, right, let's run a competition. Let's, uh, let's put a great picture, which will catch someone's eye. Let's, you know, think about that element rather than go, I'll communicate with everyone. I'll just copy and paste that on there. And it's like a war and peace document. And people don't want to read that. What they want to do is you, what you want to do is capture them, capture them and drive them to somewhere else where they're ready to read. And quite often some businesses or some uh, charities will only run off something like Facebook. And the difficulty with that is that Facebook's changing all the time. And Facebook could disappear. Facebook is also um, owned Instagram. And I know um, of, of people who run Instagram accounts after five years, their, their accounts just deleted. And they've tried to go to Facebook and say, why is it deleted? And they've gone, oh, whatever. They really don't care, honestly. There's no way of contacting them by phone, email. It's all automated. They have got the numbers. They have no care of anybody in the world. They provide the platform. You use it. If you don't like it, get lost. If we delete it, unlucky. So this is why, and a lot of you, when I did some research on all of this, a lot of you have websites, which is great, but you drive people to your website to actually do some research, do some additional reading. So the social media post is, have a look at this. It's really good. Link it through to your website, but don't link it to the home page. Link it to the individual page where you've got that information on. So remember, it's like, wouldn't it be great to walk into a supermarket and go pasta and it's in front of you, brown pasta, good. Uh, I'll have the sauce now and it comes in front of you. You know, shopping is becoming like that or will become like that. And this is how you, you can do this with, digit, with, uh, with social media. You copy the URL at the top and put it into the, the post uh, and it automatically then puts a link from your post to your website. So Facebook feeds your website. And I'll show you how to measure this later on. Um, but it is all part of it. The next, if you look up a little bit, there's a paid area. So paid marketing, I fully understand. You guys are charities, you know, money, money isn't something that you want to throw away. But you can actually boost posts. You can pay to get something up there if there's going to be some sort of value back to you again. Uh, and the paid area is, is, is amazing. You can, you can target people. So I was dealing with a, a wedding photographer. He was a wedding photographer based in South Wales and his, you can filter who sees any of your adverts. And one of the filters was, uh, he wanted to target. So he was a wedding photographer. He targeted women who lived in South Wales, who had changed their profile from single to engaged in the last three months. And only they would see the post. So he's gone from, you know, 5 million down to, uh, 50,000 or but probably a lot less, you know, probably about a hundred people. Um, so you can target who wants to see your stuff. So you could say, right, I want Solver and five kilometers out or Langham 
10 kilometers out because we're going to do a festival and we're going to invite everybody to it. And anybody in that area will see this advert when they, and you don't pay for this advert until they click on it. Uh, generally costs are, you know, something like that would be anything from, you know, 5p if that. So the paid area is quite interesting. If you have the revenue or it's something where you're fundraising, where you can generate a revenue, you could say, right, let's put 20 quid on it and see what happens. If I move down again, content also is really important, not only for your website, but also for your, your social, social media. And we'll go over how to, to think about your content. A lot of digital stuff is about local. So you need to make sure that your social media platforms have um, your address on there or have a local reference and, and just local references all the time. Because when people search on Google, those keywords will be picked up within Google and you'll be showcased there. Uh, there's a great platform called Google My Business. Google My Business is free of charge. You, need, it, you go on there, there are, there's areas to put on um, uh, social posts. It's also got this great word at the start, which is Google. And if you work with any of the Google tools, you will um, be picked up, you will get higher in the search engines, which is the whole you know, part, part of the key of all of this. So content is another area, local is another one. Linking to your website, linking from Facebook to your website will help your website get higher in the search engines. So you don't want to always link to your website because actually these social media platforms will penalize you for linking from Facebook to another destination away from Facebook. You know, they are their own monster. So once on Facebook, they want to keep you on Facebook. So the links, like I said before, you need to link to your website, but don't totally always link to your website. Think of other things that can go up as well. So link to your website periodically, and that will help your website get higher within Google as well. Video is a real key. If you think about it, um, in the 1960s, the TV came out. Uh, 1970s, the couch potato was invented. Uh, even more when the remote control came in. And we are kind of pre-programmed to sit and watch a square thing with flashing lights. Um, so when we're going through social media streams, if a video starts playing, it catches our eyes and we naturally start looking. In advertising, you're not allowed to do too many frames per second. Otherwise, it's subliminal advertising into your brain. So therefore, um, but any movement on a, on a screen um, will catch your eye. So you need to think about video. And how do you do videos? These phones, they, the, the camera in here is probably just as good as the camera they used in the first Star Wars at the end of the 70s. Sorry, I'm a Star Wars fan. Um, so you can do quick videos. Hey, if you don't like it, delete it. But keep trying doing videos, panoramics. You know, if you're all meeting together, try and do a video of everyone smiling and laughing, post it up there. It doesn't have to be cutting edge BBC quality, but it adds an environment to your whole platform. And it's a case of... I suppose one of the things I write down on my pad all the time is to just to tell people to be brave, press that button, be brave, post it up. There's a guy called Gary V who's, who's massive in social media. Uh, his comment is don't worry about the content, just post it. You'll soon find out what's good, the bad and the ugly in there. Obviously there are limitations to humor and, and what you can post up, but you know, posting up a bad, a you think is a bad video may get an amazing response from everyone else that said, I watched that video, it was really good. Everyone was smiling and everyone was happy, you know, especially when we're stuck in this bubble of our houses. Um, that kind of atmosphere can really push it out to other people. Moving on up, we've got reviews. Reviews can be posted on Facebook um, and, and other social platforms. So you need to ask people. Google My Business is a great one to add reviews. And while I'm talking, well, sorry, with Google My Business as well, there's also one called Bing My Business. It's free of charge. It's also when you set up Bing, which is run through Microsoft, it'll say, do you want to sync the information? Do you want to take the information from Google Maps onto, Google, onto Bing Maps? And you go, yep. And it will automatically move it over. So it's one of those kind of no-brainer ones where it will do most of the, the hard work for you. And the final one with local is Apple Maps. Have a look at Apple Maps because those are three free platforms you can put yourself on. And with iPhones being the, the main kind of users, uh, Android are massive, so that's Bing and Bing. But with uh, Apple and iPhones, 
Uh, people will use Apple Maps who are nerdy with Apple, so they'll only use Apple Maps and therefore you'll be highlighted with them as well. And all it is, is you just showcasing yourself. It's like putting an advert on the side of the road between St. David's and Solva. Um, it's like doing that in a digital format. It's free of charge, it takes time. That's the only thing you've got to consider. And you just got to you do the breathing exercise beforehand so you don't get stressed. You know, breathe in, breathe out, right, I'm going to do Apple Maps. It's just a case of setting it all up. Make sure you save your password so you can go back in it. And the thing that really is the beauty that I love about digital is it's all transparent. So in other words, if you put a good post up, it'll show how many people saw it, how many eyeballs saw it, uh, what kind of response you got off it. If you link through to your website, you'll be able to see how many people it, it sent through to your website. So really important stuff. Moving on. Why use social media for community? It's free. You know that already. All of it costs nothing uh, unless you want to pay for, pay for um, advertising within it. Um, you can really grow a local, local kind of community, but you've still got to tell them about it. Um, one thing that a lot of people do is they, use, they go, right, I'm going to do social media. I'm going to use Facebook because everyone uses Facebook and I use Facebook. So everyone uses Facebook. But there are other people out there. Um, the Pinterest, 70% of the population of, that use Pinterest, which is a visual photograph one, is, um, is women. So if women are your target, then that's one of them. Facebook's audience is the kind of over 40s. Um, we are discovering our friends at school or not wanting to discover our friends at school who discover us. So we're communicating through this. The kids aren't on Facebook because their parents and their grandparents can stalk them then. So they're off on WhatsApp or other platforms where all their mates are. It also helps with your branding with the kudos of you as an organization to, to have social media platforms up there. So it, it personalizes you guys. It gives you an identity. Uh, the pictures you put up there should have smiles, all those kind of things, because it, it creates that atmosphere in, you, in the, the user. The platforms communicate, engage with people, increase brand awareness, helps word of mouth because of sharing, liking, people taking an action. And you can target people with the, the paid area or by using certain hashtags like hashtag Solver, hashtag Pembrokeshire uh, on Twitter. It doesn't work so well on, on Facebook. And I know this word, it says purchase on there, but however, if you think about the customer journey, the customer journey with any social media stuff is awareness. So you posting on social media creates awareness. You having a good platform, a, a, a completed platform, something that kind of winds me up is that I go onto people's Facebook accounts and they haven't set it up completely. They haven't put three categories in, they haven't put their address in, they haven't put, um, and I know some of you, can't put an address but you can you can put the the the, the community hall or something like that as an address um, but they haven't filled it in with a description there's so much information that can go in there it's a case of and personally in my business i go into it every quarter every six months depending on time and i go in and review the information i've put onto facebook as a as a profile um when you post up stuff it, people then consider it they then consider go they then look around other posts within your platform within that you've written and say, mm, these guys are good. They then decide to purchase, either purchase to turn up or volunteer or, you know, um, buy an item because I know a framer on the list. Uh, retention means that they may, you may say, well, follow us and they click the thumbs up and they will start getting more of your information. So therefore you've got to post more up there. And advocacy means that they're going to advertise you a little bit more. They're going to shout about you a little bit more. You need to, literally ask people to share stuff of your stuff of yours and if you think about anybody that uses facebook they probably have i don't know on average three to five hundred people that follow them or friends um, and every time someone shares anything out there it goes out to another 300 people so if i got three shares today off this workshop i would have 900 people that would see about this workshop it, the amplification is massive. So you need to, and some of the content stuff I'll go over will cover some of this. Who's your target audience? I normally have, oh, I have got it. Stick person. I bring this up on all my presentation. Who are they? Male, female, what age are they? Um, where do they live? 
what do they do? Where do they shop? Are they Waitrose or Lidl's? Um, this kind of stuff. You need to put a, um, a, a thought of who you're trying to target. And some people I deal with say, oh, they're everybody. And I'm going, no, who, who comes and sees you? Who are the people that interact with you? That's the kind of thing. And you need to write your stuff for that audience. Um, does it support your overall strategy? You know, does the information you put up there, is it just put up there for the sake of it? Or is it, uh, is it needed by the people who are actually your audience? And do you have the resources to do it well is, is a real key because we're not talking about if you, if you really want to push this, we're talking about maybe two to three posts per day. Sometimes if you really want to go for it, I mean, in, uh, I don't use Facebook that much for my business, but we post maybe twice a week, minimum, bare minimum, which means that there's a breath of fresh air going through it. It means that when someone goes to our Facebook account, it doesn't say, um, last post was 2013 because if it was 2013 in our heads we're going are they still running are they still going are they still you know all of these kind of questions need to be thought about the actual platforms out there there's lots of them so Facebook's the biggest one uh, YouTube owned by Google's the second one um, it's interesting actually the stats that came out over COVID was that um, the uh, more people were using YouTube than Facebook. I did actually dive in a little bit more and they were watching Peppa Pig. So that was, you know, parents at home doing homeschooling and going, just watch this for a while. But, you know, um, but YouTube is a massive channel. We're not talking about the under 20s watching it. It is everybody does it. You know, if I've got to put a radio in a car, I go to YouTube and read instructions. If I've got to fix the loo because the ball cock's gone down, I go to YouTube and get instructions off a plumber. Uh, WhatsApp's a massive one. Um, there's a lady around here that runs a B&B &B where 80% of her business comes from WhatsApp because they're all part of a WhatsApp group. And when you send out a message, it goes out to all of them. Um, and it's a great little tool just as an organization to communicate with everybody. You just got to choose, you know, who, who you need to choose who goes in it. So a friend of mine runs a business and he communicates with all his staff with WhatsApp. If there's a you know, competition going on, or, you know, if you get this target, he'll communicate out through WhatsApp, WhatsApp, and all the staff communicate through it as well. Facebook Messenger is another one. Instagram's a big one, but you've just got to have a lot of pictures in the background. TikTok um, is video orientated, really. QQ, there are, uh, I put it in just because you've got to realize there are other ones outside of, of the UK and English speakers. Uh, I've got a cosmetic company that use QQ quite successfully from um, that they're based in Cardiff. But there's then Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Snapchat, there's lots. What you need to do is work out where my audience are. Are my audience using Twitter? Are my audience using Facebook? Which one do I need to use? And you may say, I hear people all the time, oh, I don't like Twitter because Donald Trump was on it. And you go, yeah, but just don't follow him. You don't have to. Um, I use Twitter because I like the news or what's going on straight away. I find it quite good for business. Um, I follow, uh, if you go to Pembroke County Council, you can see who they follow and therefore I follow those people. So I'll show you some of these things uh, as we, when I go live onto, onto the internet. The platforms themselves. So which platform is, is good for you? Uh, Twitter is, I find it very, um, it's great for business. It's good for communicating. They used to call it six degrees of separation. Uh, and now it's one degree of separation. You know, if I want to send a message to Barack Obama, I can find his Twitter account, send him a direct message. He probably won't come back, but you never know. Um, you know, my, one of my staff uh, likes Geordie Shaw. So I got someone from Geordie Shaw to send her a birthday message. Uh, and she put it on Instagram and she started having a conversation with her. That's little old person in Pembrokeshire communicating with someone who is a, a B-list star having a communication. You know, we are communicating, we can communicate with whoever we want. Um, and Twitter's a, a, a great one to, to look at. So you can lobby a, a, an MP, you can hustle uh, Pembrokeshire County Council. Uh, I remember doing some of the protests to try and keep the secondary school open. Um, and some of the stuff that I think it was Father Dorian at the time was putting up actually got picked up by Channel 4 News and they'd sent the, the, the TV people down. So journalists cover this as well. Facebook, 
everybody's on Facebook, but Facebook is quite, uh, it's not the best platform to be honest, because when you post on a business, when you post on a page, uh, only 4% of your audience will see any of your posts. It, it, it's quite entertaining how everybody kind of puts posts on Facebook. Well, I post on Facebook all the time. Why didn't you see it? Uh, and it's because Facebook dampen it down. Facebook dampen it down because you have to, with Facebook, you post something up, but literally 4% of your audience will see it. 4% of the people that follow you. The only way of amplifying that is by getting a like, a comment, or a share. And as soon as you start getting like comments and shares, that message will amplify and it will start amplifying quite a lot. So say with Instagram, there was a, a, an article I was reading about uh, an organization where they got all the staff. They said, right, we will post at 12 o'clock every single day. What we ask you to do is like comment and share. So they had 50 staff or 50 people within the organization. They liked comments and share and it went viral. It started going, and the algorithms, or algorithm is a rule, and basically Facebook have a rule that says, if you get 15 likes, we will show it to 15% or 20% of your audience. But Facebook, posting things on Facebook and hoping people will see it, generally is, is, a, is a fool's game. Um, you're talking to a brick wall nearly, you'll get more communication. It, it is a great platform. However, what you need to do is you need to mobilize the, everybody. And you, what you could do as a group, I mean, I know you're all part of different organizations, but you could create a, a Facebook pod where you say, right, we're all going to post something on all our platforms at eight o'clock at night or 12 o'clock in the, or between 12 and one. What we ask you all to do, please, is to go into Facebook between 12 and one. When you see our posts, please like, comment and share. And honestly, if you've got 10 people like, commenting, and share, if you've got 20 people in the pod, 10 people share because, you know, we're all busy and ooh, I forgot or, you know, the alarm didn't go off or any of that, your posts will start amplifying and you'll get more visibility straight away because this is how these social platforms work. All of them do, every single one of them, LinkedIn, all of them. They all work on, put a post up, anyone interested? No, Pfft. wet cloth on it. Oh, someone's interested. Oh, okay, we're getting more, we're getting more, we're getting amplification. Also, when it's getting like, comments, and shares, it's going out to 300 people each time because they, these people who are liking and commenting and sharing have friends as well that will see it. So it's really looking at um, anything that you post up, setting a schedule together, or maybe you have a WhatsApp group that you say, right, when I post on Facebook, I'm just going to send everyone a message. Please make sure you have notifications on your phone. Maybe you sit down with everybody and set it all up on their phones just in case anyone doesn't understand it. Uh, and what we'd like you to do, you can't force anyone, but you, what we'd like you to do is just kind of amplify this message a bit more by like, comment and share. If you're not a, a, a typing person, um, then just like it and share it. You know, if you want to add a comment, please do uh, but, but write a, a, a nice comment. Oh, this, this event looks really good, or I can't wait for this, or great, or, or great organization there, Sarah. Thanks very much for that. Or you, you know the kind of stuff that needs to go on there. So any of this stuff, all social media platforms work on engagement, amplification. Otherwise, you are literally dropping a message in and into a pool and it just goes disappears. The ripples are bigger when you get the, the engagement. LinkedIn. Now, I know your you know, charities, communities, all this kind of stuff, but if you're trying to fundraise, fundraise from businesses, you could set up a LinkedIn personal profile for yourself, but then you set up a business page on there, and that's just another advert on the internet. Um, populate it with your logo, populate it with your banner, populate it with a little bit of information about you. It's free of charge, and it's another link through to your website, which Google likes. So my recommendation is to actually register all these platforms. Even if you don't know how to spell Pinterest, go in there, register it, put a logo, banner, put a bit of information in there, and then put the first post is on there, say, uh, or one picture up there that says, we don't currently use this platform, but please go to our website to find out more. Instagram. So Facebook is generally the, the over 40s. LinkedIn is business oriented. But then if you're looking for, uh, I was dealing with a lady that was trying to get um, help ladies go from um, a maternity back into work 
and just get their mental state together and doing uh, wellness stuff with them. And I said, well, why don't you go to Admiral and say, look, why don't you pay me to get people who go off on maternity to get them back into work? She said, I didn't think about that. That's where, my, that's where I need to target people. So she found someone who ran the HR on, within LinkedIn and sent them a message. You know, you could find the person that runs HR or um, anything within LinkedIn that, that's part of Pembrokeshire County Council or the Welsh Assembly, and you could send them a personal message. It's just that, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Pinterest, Instagram, you need images. Um, and you need to get those up. Now, if you're going to use images, what you need to do is, is just start taking pictures, lots of pictures. Uh, every event you do, take pictures of people smiling. Um, you have to consider the legal side. So just like at the start, you were asked, do you mind if I video this? Uh, and everyone said, yeah, no problem at all. You have to kind of, in your form, say, I will be taking pictures and sharing them on social media. If you mind, please tell me beforehand. Um, and it's very much definitely with with children um but with it's just courtesy really maybe you put it in the form at the bottom we will be taking pictures and sharing them if you don't like it please come back to us um so pinterest and instagram very picture orientated google my business is location orientated um with times uh, a description of the business services you offer posting areas adding reviews all of those and youtube again video orientated now I'm going to quickly go over frequency and hopefully you don't kind of pass out on this one. I was reading an article the other day about an American company that suggested if you can use Twitter, you have to do 15 posts a day. I, I did kind of just stop reading because there's no way I have time for 15 posts a day. But if you're going to use Twitter, you need to think about two posts a day, um, really. And I know this sounds quite a lot, but you need to put that fresh blood in it. It can all be scheduled. What you post on Facebook can go on Twitter. Don't automate them, the two though. Don't say, if I put something on Facebook, it automatically goes on Twitter because your Twitter account will have fb.com, fb.com, and it will just look, and a message on Twitter is different to a message on, on Facebook, as well as don't link Instagram and Facebook together because Instagram, you should put, I reckon about 20 hashtags per post. Now, if you're going to put 20 hashtags on a Facebook post, you're going to go, oh, my God, what's all this jargon on here? Whereas on Instagram, you go, oh, normal. Um, so don't automate the two between them. Just you need to go, here's a post. I'm going to make it ready for Twitter, ready for Facebook, ready for LinkedIn. And then you post them up um, when you need them. And I'll talk about scheduling in a minute. So frequency. Two a day on Twitter. I would say the minimum on Facebook three, three per, per, per week. Now, when I put a post up, I don't think, right, I'm going to put a post up and um, that's it. I think, right, I, when do people use social media platforms? Different times, different days. So you could put up a post about an event that's happening on Monday. You could put it up, uh, put it up on Monday morning. I would reword that post and I'd put it up on Wednesday afternoon. I would reword that post and maybe put it up on Friday evening. So I'm hitting three different kind of timings and different schedules there. I would then put in another maybe two posts around it to put a sandwich. So they're not just seeing the same post all the time. So you could put a picture of, I don't know, I'll use Solver again because I'm just down the road. Solver Harbour, isn't it beautiful this time of year? And then the other post underneath is um, there's a coffee morning happening here or, you know, you could, you could mix it up with other stuff. So content creation as we go on to that bit, is all about creating and gardening and fielding all this content together to make it easier for everyone to, uh, to get it all. So these are the considerations as we go along. Is it possible to schedule and share retweets? You know, you stumped me. I've been doing these workshops for how long and someone stumped me. Can you schedule retweets? You can do RSS feed. So what I mean by that is with certain programs, you can say, go to the BBC site. Um, yeah, you've never found a way. You can go, you can say, go to the BBC site on Monday at nine o'clock in the morning and pick up anything that's to do with charity and put it on my Facebook account. You can schedule that kind of stuff, but I've never, you can't really schedule, uh, schedule shares and retweets. That is literally one of those physical things. Um, I'm one of these people. I am one of those sad people. I walked here today uh, to I'm working from my office 
and I go along with my phone and I quickly do a few retweets, sharing. I'm, I'm, you know, have my magic thumb just sharing and, and sharing things out. And that's part of, that's part of my schedule, I suppose, just to do time saving. While I'm walking, I'll share and, and do that kind of stuff. But I, I don't think you can actually schedule stuff. I can't believe I've been stumped right at the start. So, um, scheduling, uh, I mean, the amount of posts, Facebook, two to three per week, um, LinkedIn, up to you how much you want to put on there. Uh, but I would say, you know, one per week is enough. Pinterest is, I, we've got a business Pinterest one and I literally go in there once every quarter and add something to it because it's not really our target audience, but it advertises us and it posts through to our website. So I use it just because we're a digital agency and we have to use these things. I'm not for business. I don't really like Facebook, but I have to use it because I'm a digital agency. So we post things on there periodically. But if it was my choice, I would, I'd literally put on Facebook, we don't use this platform, but if you want to know more, go to Twitter to, to follow us. Um, Instagram is a little bit more, you need to do quite a lot of posts per day, um, maybe two to three. Uh, and I know you're writing this down and going, oh my word, how are we going to do this? But write it down, think about it. Is it possible? Maybe someone will go, I'll do that and run it for a little while, see what happens. If it suddenly gets five more volunteers, or lots of people come up in the street, go, I saw your Instagram stuff, it's really good. Makes you feel good in here. Pat yourself on the back and go, actually, it's worth getting those three pictures a day and posting them up, because it's having an effect. So it's experimenting with these platforms. Google My Business, we post on there as a business, but to be honest, it doesn't really get much interaction. So what you can do is say, right, anything I post on Facebook, I'm going to put on Google My Business and it links back to the website. Therefore, it's good for search engine optimization. YouTube, trying to get people to do videos is difficult. I've been talking about it for years. You know, we're not the best at it. We do a few educational ones on there and post up a few per year. If I was really going for it, I'd probably do more videos on something like Facebook uh, within Instagram as well. Um, but it comes down to if anybody wants to pick up that button and start running with it. Some relevant stats. So, you know a lot of this already. A lot of people use Facebook. A lot of people use YouTube. A lot of people use all of these. We don't know how many of your friends use them because it's all on their phone. And we're all a little bit private and, and this is my world, you know. But it's worth, like I said at the start, ask your audience. You know, what platforms you use? You'd be surprised. You may suddenly find out that some people use YouTube all the time. Or, you know, they, it's interesting what people use. Um, don't tell my wife, but I look over her shoulder when she's on social media and see what platform she's on. And she's, she's moved from Facebook to Instagram because the, the, there's, I don't know, more people talking about decorating stuff and things like that. And that's what she's interested in. But people move and change and they use each platform for different stuff. So... I would go and ask your audience, but all of them are pretty good. It just comes down to how to use them. They're also quite similar. They're all becoming quite magnolia in how they, how they work. The platform themselves, there's loads of stats. It's the, the numbers are, are, are massive. Average user has about 338 friends, 300 to 500 friends, roundabout. So if anybody shares anything that you put out there, that is, that is great. That goes out to 300 of their friends. And I'll show you uh, user-generated content is something that's really important. People spend quite a lot of time on Facebook or social media. They don't all spend, you know, we don't sit there on our phones, all, not all of us anyway, uh, doing this all the time. But we use it at different times. It's, it's kind of a, it's a crack cocaine for some people where they, oh, I'm bored, what shall I do? I'll just look through Facebook. And it's kind of like we take our brain out, put it to one side. I don't want to think. I'm just going to look through Instagram. So think about that person's frame of mind when they're looking at your social platforms. COVID time, more people are using it. Uh, most people that use social media use it within a, a mobile phone. However, management of social media is actually better on a desktop uh, because the stats look better. Um, Tablets, less people use tablets. It's surprising, actually, with, with uh, when I look at uh, websites, how few people. I would say that it's anything from like 2 to 10% of, of any views on websites are from, are from tablets. Most are from, are from phones, um, which is a, a consideration. Uh, spending longer on social media, more people are spending more time on there, using messaging. 
we've kind of been dropped in this pandemic and we've kind of been forced kicking and screaming to go in and use this this stuff um, if you want to get all these kind of stats if you go to uh, we are social um, they, they do and Hootsuite they do a report every six months which is amazing it basically says how many people in, the, in Britain use Facebook uh, what do they look at how long do they spend on it literally gives you all those kind of stats because this is the transparency of the industry I'm going to look at Facebook predominantly because all of you use Facebook. Um, so Facebook, I'm just going to flip through some of the, the stuff in this. And with Facebook, you can't use, you can't have a personal account which talks about uh, charity, community, business, those kind of things. Facebook have the option to shut you down. Um, they will send a warning and they will say, I'm sorry, you're using your Facebook page for non-personal use. So you need to have a Facebook page which has to be linked to a personal page. So as an individual, me, I can then, I, I, I sign into my personal account, I go up to the URL at the top, I take, I put forward slash page and this will take me to how to set it up and I can set it up as a page. If you're using as a personal page and you're using it you're, you're running the gauntlet of being shut down by Facebook. They will give no explanation. There's a company local here that had over 2,000 people following them from all over the world. Facebook warned them. They ignored it. It got shut down. That's 2,000 plus people, followers disappeared. There are limitations within a business page, which is the problem, which is why people don't like it sometimes. Um, it gets dampened down. So the, the, the posts that go on there get dampened down even more than a personal page. So, and why do, why do Facebook do this? Money. They want you to boost the post. They want you to pay for advertising because that is where their revenue comes from. Their revenue comes from you going, actually, I'm not getting interaction. I want to target uh, men in Pembrokeshire with this event or people of a certain age in Pembrokeshire for this event. And they make a bit of money. And if you think of how many billion people use it, if they get one pence off each person every single day, that's quite a lot of money. This is where they make their money. This is how they can offer a free service. But what they do, they manipulate the rules and the algorithms to dampen down your posts. However, there is a good part of that is that what I would do is look at doing, um, it was Mark Zuckerberg that did a presentation about two years ago, and it was in a full room of marketers. And he said, look, Posting on Facebook is nearly, a, you know, we have dampened it down. We have dampened it down. Unless it's going to get engagement, likes, comments, and shares, it's been dampened down. They said, however, your audiences, and this is from our stats, your audiences on Facebook and Instagram use stories. So you need to start looking at, at not only posting content, but posting stories. Now, I'm not going to show you how to post a story. Best thing I would do, go to YouTube. How to create a post, how to create a story on Facebook. Watch a video that is three months old and there'll be amazing videos. And if you don't understand the first one, watch the second one, the third one. It'll be literally 20 minutes. There'll be someone showing you, right, do this, do this, do this, you know. And I'd rather give you lots of information for you to go away and do some homework, it's like being at school. Um, so stories is where everybody is. That's where people are because it's it's lazy. You know, we go to Instagram. And we click on stories and it feeds information and it feeds the next. It's a kind of a, a slow-mo TV of, of just images coming over. And then we stop and look at it and then we carry it on again. So think about stories within your, your, your Facebook messages. It also stories have to be posted from a mobile phone, I find, uh, or a, a mobile device rather than a, a desktop. So there are differences between the two. So from this slide, make sure you've got a business, have a page. Uh, go in there and sign up as a page. If you have a community page or a group page, they are good. They, they get better interactions. However, you've got to manage it. And when I talk about managing it, I mean that you may have, you may put a post up there and someone may go on there and go, that's a load of rubbish. Or I think you're all a bunch of idiots and all that. And you've got to deal with that side and someone needs to administrate it. So anyone that I know that has a community page has to spend quite a bit of time just policing it. 
Um, you know, I know a lot of you know each other, but you also know the term, there's nothing weirder than folk. And there's also a certain term in my world called a keyboard warrior, where someone has maybe had a few glasses of wine and goes in and starts having a go at someone. You don't want to create a platform for that. Facebook pages is the safest part, but if you want to, if you want to create a community page, you can create one, but you're opening up a different kind of can of worms. You're talking about diff, uh, longer, l more administration, more dealing with issues. And do you want that in such a small community? You may want to trial it, I would say. But I, first of all, I'd get onto your business page and sort, sort that out really and, and get that back out. Totally down to you. I'm fully... You know, I'm open that's, that's doing it and it's working amazingly. Uh, it's, it's just a lot more work. It's a lot more admin and a lot more time to deal with stuff. Uh, and you don't want to go falling out with someone that's next door to you. Some of the ways. So I'm going to give you some quick ones on how to grow your followers. Growing your followers is, 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 is there's some easy ones in there. One, is the destination fit for purpose? And I mean fit for purpose being, is it, um, is it filled in correctly? Is the picture at the top? Have you changed it last month? Do you change it quite frequently? So treat it like uh, any, any magazine that comes out on a weekly basis or monthly basis. Change your banner image at the top. Um, maybe go to a local photographer. So, you know, there's someone like, and, you know, I don't know if they work with you already, someone like Heather Bennett in, in Seoul, you could go to her and say, look, can I have 12 seasonal pictures of you, which we can put on our Facebook account. You can put your watermark in there. So it's kind of advertising for you, but it just means we change our, our banner image every single month to be seasonal. Um, you may, you keep your logo as the logo, but think about changing that banner image. Maybe once every quarter, once every six months, you go and have a look at your profile settings just to have a look in there, make sure they're all okay. Because again, like I say, Facebook's changing all the time. You just want to make sure it's there. And it's, it only takes 15 minutes logging in, make sure it's all good. Oh, there's a spelling mistake there. I can't believe that. You know, that kind of stuff will, will help your, your organization. So when a follower when someone looks at your profile, they're not hit by a spelling mistake or they're not hit by, oh, it's the same picture I saw four years ago. You know, you've got to put that breath of fresh air in there. It's interesting, there's a company around here that on their leaflet, they, they've spelled one of, the, one of the boat trip companies, they spelled one word uh, incorrectly and they get phone calls from the intellectuals phone up and tell them, they say, oh, you've got a, a spelling mistake on your fourth page of your leaflet. And they go, oh, really? Thank you so much. We'll make sure we'll change that. Are you interested in a boat trip? And generally, the conversion rate is they, they sell that person a trip to the smalls, which is probably, I think it's 80 quid a shot. So spelling mistakes actually react, people react to it. So maybe if you want to react and put a spelling mistake in there, the, the spelling police will be out there at you anyway. Moving on. So... How to create your, again, more followers. And I know some of you may have already done this, but maybe it's a case of once a year you go to people and say, look, we're all in a group together. Let's all work together to get more people on Facebook. And what we can do is go into our own personal accounts and we can invite, invite our friends to like our page. And all that does, it just sends a notification to me or whoever your friends are to say, why not like? Um, Pavs or why not like um, solve a care any of those kind of ones so it gives you that that opportunity to just share out and that will get you you know another five people liking another five people on your um, on your list and this is just a case of encouraging people now I know what it's like I've done meetings where I've said I know what a great idea should we all go away and just invite all our friends now the best way of doing this is to sit around, get everyone together and go, has everyone got their phones? Cool. Do you want to open them up? Let's make you everyone connected. Why don't we all go on Facebook? If you'd be really good, if you can invite all your, and make sure you know how to do it beforehand. Uh, why don't we invite everyone to, to join our group? Uh, and this is the message. You can put a message on here saying, hi, you know, I thought this would be interesting. I wonder if you could support us or any of those kind of things. There's, it, it's, it's a great way of going out to each of you have, I don't know, 388 apparently friends, according to Facebook on average. So all of you got 388 friends, invite them, invite them to share. And you may have done this six months ago, maybe do it once every six months, once every year. You just pester people. You know, if I'm, 
if I get an invitation like that, I look at it and go, or I see the notification, I look through it every now and then, and it will in increase the visitor rate or the amount of people that, that get your stuff, I suppose. Another way. So competitions. Put up a competition. It doesn't have to be something, you know, astronomical. I mean, this is Barty Rum who we do stuff for. But putting up a competition and saying, you know, like, comment and share. Facebook say they, they just don't like this. However, you're not going to get shut down for this. But you could say a competition where maybe you get a day or two hours learning how to play the piano or... You know, someone will teach you how to do something. I, I don't know. But if you sat down and thought about it, uh, maybe someone will come around and do the gardening for, for, for an hour if you like, comment and share this. I, I don't know. But you could go to a business maybe and say, look, we're doing a competition on our Facebook account. Would you give away a rake or a shovel or just for, for someone that is a gardener? Or can you donate something, go to Matthias locally and say, you know, we're doing a competition on our Facebook account. We're just trying to get more people involved with our, our stuff. Would you donate a watering can? You know, it's going to cost you not very much just to this competition. Just, it will get you out there. It's corporate responsibility. Guess what? On their taxes, they can actually claim this back. So therefore, it can be beneficial to them anyway. So just if you don't ask, you don't get. It's that cheeky question. Obviously, if you did it every week, they'll go, oh, Jesus, that person, quickly hide. She's going to ask for a watering can again. Um, so just do it every now and then. Maybe write out some businesses as a group and say, who can we ask for prizes? How can we do a competition? How can we get some more stuff? It doesn't have to be great. You know, it could be a cupcake to a, a chocolate cake to a watering can. Um, it just gets that some out, something out there. It's additional content. This is... I need to find a different type style of picture, but this is um, another one. It's how many people use mobile, mobile devices. So this is 2005, Pope John Paul's body's being carried away. And it, the question is, how many mobiles do you see? And I know this a long time ago, but I'd probably say there's, there's three on there. 2013 at the Vatican. And I'm not going to ask you to count all these likes, but each one of these people has a phone in their hand and they're taking pictures. What are they going to do with these pictures? They're going to like, they're going to, they're going to share them out to their population. Look at me, I'm at the Vatican, aren't I good? Uh, we're just at the Vatican with family or just on, they're sharing it out. So each one of these likes is communicating to 300 friends, three to 500 friends. And if you, think that each one of those likes is advertising the Vatican. You could, as a push, you know, that's just one section, you know, it's probably a lot bigger than that, um, or it is bigger than that. We're talking about a million people seeing content about the Vatican on the March the 13th, 2013, uh, at, let's say it's probably like, I don't know, eight o'clock at night. So a million people will see that information. How can you do that? So it's a case of saying, if anybody turns up at an event, it's asking them to say, why don't you take a picture and share it on your social media platforms? We're just asking. Maybe you get some leaflets done or postcards. We get some postcards done and, and send them out to people or, or give them to people in, in workshops when we used to do proper ones. Um, but you could do postcards with a picture of Solver on saying, please support the community. Please share all our posts. Please like our, our, um, our social media stuff. Uh, and if you hand them out to lots of people, people carry these things around. I know we're in COVID areas, but at the moment, celebrations, is it 17th next week? We're all allowed to hug and we're allowed to go out and we're allowed to be in the same room together. So maybe we're allowed also to pass over a postcard. I think they don't cost a lot of money to, to create some postcards and literally post them through every door in Solver or Langham or wherever you are as a, as a local idea, or you have them for events where you give them out in an event. It's a postcard with a great picture because what do we do with postcards with great pictures? We put a magnet on it and we put it on our fridge or our boiler. And therefore that's subliminal advertising all the time. And on the back, it says, you know, why not support our community? Um, please like our social media stuff, please interact, please volunteer, and just put a few actions in there, which are nice and quirky and easy. You'd be surprised on the kind of action you get. But this thing here with the, the user-generated content. User-generated content is such a key. So 
the stat that, that I read a year or statistic I read years ago, 92% of customers trust online content from friends and family over brand messaging because we've been lied to for so long. This pen will make you look gorgeous. It's like, what? You know, this, this tea, if you drink this tea every single day, or get rid of all your wrinkles. Yeah, whatever. Um, whereas if I put on my social account that this tea's really nice, and actually I feel younger because I've drunk it, my mates will probably go, Angus is a cynical git, and he wouldn't post it up unless it was real. So maybe I'll try it. So you need to kind of use that user-generated, how do you get other people to post up about your stuff? And I know you have a, uh, some of your communities are an aging community, things like that. But if they have phones, it's a case of encouraging them. Maybe you do a training session on how to, how to post or how to take pictures and share it on social media. All of those to bring it back to real basics. Um, the other thing is people trust strangers second. So family and friends first, strangers second over brands. So we don't trust brands. We've been lied to for years and years that, you know, eat peas and you'll live forever and all this kind of stuff. Whereas if our friends say it, we've got to come back. Hey, you lied to me. I'm going to get rid of them off Facebook or lucky I'm not talking to them anymore. It's that kind of stuff. So it's asking people to, to contribute. It's a community thing as you already, you know, you guys are a community. So it's just a case of it needs to be that way. So ask them to contribute. And I always work on this thing. And it infuriates my wife. If you don't ask, you don't get. So I go up to people and say, you know, can you tell me the way to here instead of fighting my way through a map? Or, you know, I ask people questions or, and all that kind of stuff. Or can I have an extra knife with that? You know, people, oh, I don't want to ask that. We're so British. You have to be a little bit more ballsy um, and have those cojones and ask those questions and, and put it out to people. You may get people going, well, no. But you may get people going, great idea. I'm going to contribute to this. So think about that. User-generated content it is the real key with all of this. Ask people to check in. It's interesting how I used to do workshops, and I'm not a, I'm not a big kind of socially. I sat with all my social platforms, and I went, oh, I don't people like this. I'm quite a private person. Um, but when I used to do workshops with like 20 people in a, at a golf course talking about social media, it's interesting how many people would actually say, I'd say, how many people checked into this location? It's interesting how out of 20 people, I would probably get two, three people said, oh, yeah, I was in the car park. I checked into the location. So when they check into the location or the community hall or wherever they are, they're, they're sharing it out to their friends. So there's nothing wrong with having a, a little leaflet saying, why not, why not check into the location here? Tell your friends about where you are. You know, there's nothing wrong with that side of it. If you don't ask, you don't get. As well, as well as getting people to like, comment, and recommend, and share your information. So <coughs> again, it's that postcard, or did you know all our information's on Facebook? Um, it's interesting how restaurants now, you don't phone a restaurant these days. You have to go online to find a, a slot to book yourself in, and they don't want to take phone calls. Um, it's interesting because they don't want to hire someone just to take phone calls to say, no, it's August bank holiday. We're fully booked multiple times. They go, no, go online. We don't even want your phone calls. So please ask, ask people to like, comment, share, put all, say, why do I need, why should I go on your Facebook account? Because that is where we put all our news. So therefore that's why you need to like, comment and share. So put some justification behind it all. Cross promote other businesses. So, like I said with the competition, you went to Matthias's, got a watering can uh, and put it out there. So we put a post up um, when our office was, was I, yeah, I got a whole load of uh, tables, uh, wood off Celtic timber. They put it all together and I put scaffolding underneath and that's our tables. Uh, I got one here now. Um, and Celtic timber did it. So we did a shout out for Celtic timber and they shared it and they liked it. And we put up, you know, every now and then we put that stuff up there. So Anybody that contributes, any business or organization or anything like that, you find their handle. And Celtic Timber was um, facebook.com forward slash Celtic Timber. So when you put it into a post, it is at Celtic Timber. And it means they see it is, is the real key with it. They see it. It advertises them for nothing. 
and happy days, they then share your information as well. So anybody that contributes to helping, you know, you guys working together, you know, thanks for the shipping in Solver for helping at uh, the shipping, whatever their, their Facebook account is, you can find all of this online beforehand and have a, a record of it all. So advertise, shout out about other people. It really, it's, dare I say, um, it, all social media is very American. And how I describe this, one of my facilitators is American. I have to apologize to him every week. Um, he, you, ask a, you ask a British person how business is, and they'll go, it's okay. And that's it. You ask an American how business is, they will go, they will probably talk to you for about three days on how amazing business is, how they've met Obama, they've run around the world three times, they've saved 50 orphan kids, you know, they, they've done all of that, brag, 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 brag. And this is what social media is about. And this is what you have to kind of change it around to. Don't be the stiff upper lip of Britain where you go, yeah, it's okay. It's, look at us, aren't we doing well? Uh, isn't um, Solver super, so, you know, it's really beautiful down in Pembrokeshire. We may be in lockdown, but with some amazing walks. Have a look at this link that goes through to other walks. You know, it's bragging rights. You need to sit there and go, actually, I'm going to say how amazing we are. And you, when you're doing social media posts, you've got to sit there with a slight bit of arrogance or hit yourself with the arrogance stick and go, I'm amazing. Why? My group is amazing. Why are we amazing? Thank you so much for um, so-and-so for organizing this and so much for this, this, this. And it is. It, it's kind of Now, you're writing it kind of feeling a bit ill at the same time. However, when I read it, I go, oh, that's really nice. Oh, that's really good. You know, you have to kind of di distance yourself from this mm, kind of side and go, actually, let's just shout about certain people. Friends and families and colleagues, it's kind of, you, you don't want to pester them too much, but ask them to, to share, share stuff. Ask them to uh, contribute to stuff. Um, one of the things on here is uh, one of the people we deal with um, is uh, a, t a tea room where they actually put up recipes and things like that. They give away how they make Welsh cakes, you know, and it's up to you. You can either buy them off us or you can make your own. Most people are too lazy to make their own. So uh, I think I came fully Welsh uh, last weekend. I did cowl and Welsh cakes. So, uh, and I beat my wife who is Welsh. She's never done any of them. So I'm feeling quite Welsh at the moment. So give away a recipe, give away uh, some, you know, those kind of things. It's that community side of things but ask your friends and family to to share and comment and those uh, on it as well regular publication <laughs> to stay in front of people so that people know about you you need to post and you need to like i said at the start about frequency we're talking about making sure that you're putting enough posts on facebook don't just put one a month or two a year that kind of stuff it, this is a conversation side of things. Now, the other part is, if you do put anything up there, if anybody interacts, you need to get back to them quite fast. Within 24 hours, 24 hours, people expect uh, a conversation. So if I sent a message back to you, or you put a post up there and I put a comment with a question on, we kind of personally think, well, they'll be back to me in no time at all. Generally, response times are two days. So you've got 48 hours, 24 hours. Now, It'd be great to nominate someone or volunteer someone uh, or ask someone to just have the social platform on their phone. So if anybody communicates with your group, it pops up on their phone. Or maybe a few of you have it, but just make sure you work out who's going to communicate back. But the quicker you communicate back, the more they like you. It's that neediness. It's like someone coming up to you in the pub and saying, that jumper's lovely. Now, if you did this, you're going to be classed as rude. If you went back and said, oh, thanks very much, I got it from so-and-so. Social media is the same. It's the word social that gives it away. You need to think about response times on anybody that comments. So if someone puts a comment up about a picture you put up there, so that's an amazing picture. If you got back within no time at all, let's say within a few hours and said, thank you very much, it came from X, Y, and Z, or yep, we change our banners once a week or something like that. That's communication. That makes them feel like, oh, wow, these guys are really good. And I, I, I understand, you know, you're, you guys are volunteers. However, if someone is willing to take it on their phone and, you know, I even say this to businesses, it's not nine to five these days. It is 24 seven. Now, 
if someone starts emailing you at three in the morning, yes, they can get lost. But if someone sends you a message at eight o'clock at night, who's going to pick it up? If someone picks it up and while they're watching TV and eating a biscuit with their, their hot chocolate or glass of wine, they can sit there with their phone and type back an answer. It's not hard. And it's not really labor intensive. It's actually kind of being, and it doesn't mean that there's going to be thousands of messages coming through. If lots of messages start coming back again, and it becomes a bit of a nightmare going, geez, I just spent all night just answering messages, then you need to get more people involved. And actually, that's called success. And therefore, you've got to say, you've got to therefore change the rules for your audience and say, look, we'll only look at messages up until five o'clock or between five and 5.30. Um, you know, you set rules then. But generally, you're not going to get a whole load of messaging. What you will get is that most people use social media in the evening. So who's going to just monitor the, the phone during the evening or those kind of things? Um, don't, please don't pass it to the youngest person going, oh, you're the youngest person. You must know how Facebook works. There you go. Find someone who's actually willing to do it because they'll do it well. Make sure, make sure I'm terrible at this because I, I use Twitter and I send messages out on Twitter. I then phone up my office because I'm walking and say, look, can you delete that message and rewrite it? Because my spelling is atrocious. Um, slightly dyslexic, that's my excuse. So yeah, think about someone that's, that's willing to do it, can spell, um, has some decent, has, they can hu put a human message out there is the key. I look down, I'm, I'm checking the time to make sure I can give you all this information. Content and engagement, talk faster. Engagement basis, uh, read comments, read them, like them, reply to comments, add value to them, you know, to your, your system by putting stories. We talked about stories and it's that's your homework. Go and learn how to do, put stories onto Instagram, how to put stories onto Facebook. It'll literally take 10, 20 minutes to learn, literally watching the videos. Um, and hey, presto, you can watch the video again if you don't get it or find a different video that someone explains it in a different way. Um, post for engagement, you know, what do you like? Put questions up there. What's your favorite walk in Solver? Um, if, you know, um, if you were gonna go for, uh, who, who do you think does the best Welsh cakes in, in North Pembrokeshire? Uh, all those kind of things would, would help, you know. And by asking a question, you're inviting a response. Now, when you invite a response, obviously you've got to look at the top where it says read comments, like comments, and reply to comments. So if you're gonna start doing this, some of your content, maybe once a week, should be a question. Another good one is maybe put a trivial question up there where you say, you know, trivial pursuits. Um, who was the first pirate that practiced around Pembrokeshire? And put it up there and just put it as a trivial pursuit question. We're all intrigued by this stuff. You know, think of your audience. They quite like, they would probably quite like that. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But think about that stuff. Use media, videos, images as much as possible. Now, there are websites like Pixabay, Unsplash, uh, that, where you can, you can download images and post them up there and they're copyright free. free. Pixabay and Unsplash, you can use copyright free images. You can use images that you've taken on your phone. When I'm having to do lots of image stuff, I kind of, when I go for a walk, I don't know, around Porthly Solver, all that kind of stuff, I try and take lots of pictures. Half of them will be rubbish because I'm not a photographer, but some of them will be okay. And I'll put those in a folder and I'll go, right, that's my folder for when I have to talk about lots of Pembrokeshire stuff or I'll do a theme on it maybe, on doors of Pembrokeshire or something like that. Think about it, just doing that. Um, maybe there's a photographer in your group that would love this kind of stuff. Say, look, can I have your photos? I just want to put them up there on our social stuff. I will attribute them to you. But a, photo, uh, a message that goes up with just text gets less response than the message that goes up with a photograph that gets less response than the message that goes up with a video. So video first, photograph second, text messages are quite yawn worthy. You know, when we're watching TV, we don't want to read a lump of text. And I know you're kind of going, yeah, but it's really important. It's all about social distancing. Yeah, I'm watching it on the news. But if you put on there something a little bit more interesting, then you just need to put that bit of spin on there. Just be careful with humour. 
what I do with some organizations is I write a content strategy or a content list. In other words, what am I going to write about? And I would write a list. Some of, uh, one of my businesses at well, companies I work with laminated the, the list I did and they put it up on their wall because you're always thinking of content. What are we going to put oh, today? What should we put? Oh, what's that? Sunny. Let's put something up. It's about sunny. You know, it's so knee jerk reaction. However, why not have a list? What events are we doing? Internal, external. You know, maybe there's other events. You know, you may be in Solver, but there may be an event going on in Langham. Maybe advertise, say, oh, there's something really good going on in Langham. Maybe we can get a bus organized if enough of us organize it. Um, local community stuff. You know, I know you're, you guys are uh, a group, but there are other groups around. Push up, say, look at this, this is going on. Hashtags work on uh, Instagram and, and Twitter more than Facebook. But you can use hashtag Pembrokeshire, hashtag solve the care, hashtag the one that I put on, which isn't on this slide, um, TYC social learning. So think about put adding that in there because that amplifies the message. Maybe it's someone's birthday that's a prominent person within your organization. Put a message up there. You know, get a picture of when they were 16 or don't embarrass them too much, obviously, but you can put a picture up of, of someone's birthday and say, happy birthday to Sarah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, awards that people may have won. Maybe someone, someone who hasn't, you know, been, someone's been ill for a while and they walk from top of solver to the bottom of solver. Put it in there. You know, it's all, you know, little games, little stuff. It's just communicating. All of it just makes us feel that nice inside. Articles you've read. Now, there's a, there's a system called Google Alerts. It's free of charge. And what I do myself is, and I'll share this stuff in the uh, last part of this workshop. Um, Google, Google Alerts is free of charge. And what I put in there, I put in um, things like, I don't know, you could put Pembrokeshire in there. And then Google sends you emails with anything that's been written about Pembrokeshire today. Or you can also set it to send it to you once a week or once a month. So it will send you emails with content and you can post them up there then. And it will be articles from the Daily Telegraph about the best place to stay in Pembrokeshire. And you go, well, that's not relevant. Um, where it may have, may say something about a community group in, um, I don't know, Hanford West, which you read and go, oh, that's interesting. You know, it just keeps you in touch with what's going on. What I would also do is put the name of your organization in there. So if anybody writes anything about your organization, it sends you that article. So I put my name, my staff names, and my company name in there in variation. So if anybody writes any articles, Google send it to me. It comes up in emails, I flick through it or not flick through it if there's nothing on it. And um, it gives me more information to post up there. So articles, share other people's posts. So go on there and share other people's information on there. Uh, testimonials, you may have done something in the, one of the halls or you may have been out and about. Someone said, I tell you what, you guys are the best people or, you know, someone gives you some gushing, gushing remark. And in normal British fashion, we go, oh, get away. Oh, we're just trying our hardest. You know, that kind of embarrassed kind of thing. Well, I say, well, spin this around. Say, do you mind if I post that on social media? Because I love what you just said. So think about what other people say or say, can you email me that? Because I'd love to post that on social media. If anybody gives you a testimonial or recommendation, take it. Big yourself up, put it on social media. Someone just told us today that our group has kept them alive through the whole of this pandemic. It's just so good to be working in such a, a great bunch of people. It's all of that. It's all that touchy-feely stuff. But verbalize it. Try and put it on there. Even if they're willing to, say, do you mind if I video you and you can give me a quick testimonial? And it has to be a minute saying, these guys have been, I've been, they've been helping me for the last two years uh, with blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'd just like to thank him very much. Done, saved, post. And you say, do you mind if I put that on Facebook? Post it up there. It only takes a second. If the video's rubbish, write it down uh, and put it up there. But if it's the video you're happy with, post it up there and see what happens. This is the content you need to do or need to collect together. Stories, stories of uh, case studies. Everyone loves a good case study of, um, you know, this person came in and volunteered, they're now running the group, uh, all this kind of stuff. You know, this person came in, they were in a terrible state, we helped them out. Write a story about it, put it on your website, do a shortened version on your social media, post through to your website. 
um, videos, talk about the weather. British people love weather and, and di directions. Uh, so talk about the weather. Maybe you do a, a feed that goes on with the weather. Um, who's the one on, I don't listen to Pembrokeshire Radio, but who's the guy, the dive centre that does Pembrokeshire Radio um, weather? He does it from all over the world, wherever he is on holiday. Um, so maybe you do a post on there for the week's weather. Could be, could be put on there. Monday morning, nine o'clock, every morning, nine o'clock, someone posts up the weather. What's on locally? Put on other stuff that's going on. Local history. You know, there are, so, there's, there's a historic society um, in St. David's or there's loads of history around the area that you can post on there. Did you know the lime kilns were last used in so-and-so? Did you know that Solver went into, was, was one of the ports that, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's, it, it, it really kind of brings you guys as, as knowledge authorities is, is what they call it in the digital world. Jobs or volunteers, bragging rights, you're allowed to say that you're good. Uh, memes are those things where, you know, you've got a, a dancing person because you're happy. Uh, there's lots of GIFs, they call them, G-I-Fs. If you look for those, you could put those up there because they put a, a happy smile on things. Uh, experiment with posts and themes, maybe Halloween time, you start putting scary stories up every single day or one per, per, per week leading up to it. Um, changing the banner image, I've already talked about, competitions we talked about, questions we talked about, quirky things, things like a lot of companies kind of, they put, put their car at the top of Newgale, take a picture and they go, where's this? I brought this up with a lady in Anglesey that lived in somewhere really obscure and she took a picture of just a, a bunch of trees and you could just about see the sea and post it up there. She thought she was going to get, you know, weeks of knowledge and stuff out of this. Someone knew where it was within 10 minutes. Um, just take obscure pictures around, around the area and say, where do you think I am at the moment? And see how many people communicate. It's called content. It's called engagement bait. You're, you're fishing. You're saying, where am I now? People start going, oh, are you at the top of Solve? Are you outside the Raoul, uh, Raoul Speaks place? You, that content amplification more people see it awareness days so there's awareness days for um national women's day national ocean, uh, ocean day um there was a national naked gardening day the other day which which shocked me the other day i didn't contribute uh but it made me chuckle so just sharing that would probably make someone chuckle but there's lots of if you're thinking about content, write down a list of what kind of content you could write. If you sat down as a group, you could put it all together and then you could amplify it out through your messaging, through scheduling. We'll get to the scheduling. Language. Now, <clears throat> because we are based in Wales, some of our stuff is, uh, some of your stuff may have to be translated. Now, you need to, and this was made aware to me, that some of you maybe have got, been awarded uh, money or grants and that kind of stuff. Now, what you need to do is, some of it will say that all your messages need to be bilingual. It, it's a difficult one. I know someone that runs something in the, with the council and she has to send all her social messaging off to someone to translate two weeks before she posts on social media, which is ridiculous. You know, social media is here and now, today, tomorrow, this week, not what's happening in two weeks time. So, but make sure if you are going to do Welsh translation, make sure that also that it's translated as best can be done. Now, you could use go Google Translate. Now, Google Translate is, um, you know, translate something from German to English and you'll read it and go, oof, I'm really, that doesn't really make sense. But it's an option. You could put it into, um, Google does short sentences. So every now and then, I'm not a Welsh speaker but some of my staff are. So I, 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 put, the, I put weird sentences like the cows are, are gonna land on, four, on Thursday and I get it translated and put on our Skype messages every now and then just to kind of baffle some of them and see if they translate it correctly. Um, but there are Welsh Assembly uh, organizations that will translate a minimum amount of, of text and put it onto the, uh, that allows you to translate stuff. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, you've gotta be careful though. There are people out there who will uh, take you down for translating badly. Um, and if that's the case, then you just need to readdress how you're going to do it. But it's just a case of saying, right, how are we going to do it? Is there a Welsh speaker around? I actually got a primary school Welsh teacher who, her first language as well, to translate a, a promotional leaflet for us. Um, I had to throw them all away because they were so badly translated. So 
someone's Welsh is different to proper Welsh. I used to live in Germany and there's something called German Austrian, then Hochdeutsch, which was proper German. So it's kind of proper English or proper Welsh. You need to get it, if you're going to do translation, I always think you should get it done as best you can. But again, does cost come into it? Uh, you need to look around to see if there are any services out there that will help you out, um, like the, 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 the Business Wales system, or is Google Translate enough? A content calendar. Um, found this all turns to Google Translate. Oh, cool. I'm going to keep that one. Um, so a content calendar is really good. So you go January. What should we talk about in January? We are in May now. You could actually do one for May, June, July, and August and say, right, let's sit down as a group. Let's sit down and drink tea, coffee. Who's going to bring the biscuits? Drop in a bottle of wine if you want to get everyone together. You know, get everyone together and think about what content should we write about? What's happening in August? What's happening in July? What's happening in June? And between brains of two people, three, four, five people, you could create content for each of these months. Historic questions, um, photographs, and then you could create all this content and then you could post it on your schedule it all in advance. Now, a lot of content you see on social media isn't put up today. It's been put up maybe a month ago. With our Google Map, with our Google My Business stuff, we post it, I think we do six months beforehand. Um, with our social media, we do it two weeks in advance. So we've got to, we're two weeks ahead of ourselves at any one time on our social media. I was dealing with one company that, that I got me in at just two weeks before Christmas. And I said, right, what are we going to do for our social media Christmas stuff over Boxing Day? I said, we should have been talking about this in September and October. It means there's no rush. There's no, we need to put something on Facebook. Let's get something on Facebook now. It's not that. You sit down and go, come on then. Let's talk about June. What should we talk about in June? Any events going on? Let's put some there. You get together. It will take you, you know, if you did three hours, two hours, you could probably do um, probably about two months worth of content. Remember, you can repeat content. Remember, there are certain days like on here. It's got Valentine's Day, Pancake Day, National Pizza Day. Um, there's maybe, you know, training going on. There's the so-and-so's birthday. There's, uh, there's, there's a, some photographs to put up. There's some historic information. There's an event going on. Put a diary together because also when you get to this time next year, you sit down and do your content. You don't have to go, what should we put up for June and July? You can go, what did we do last year? Ah, we can use most of those. Let's check through and make sure that pancake day is on the same day or, you know, all this kind of stuff. Make sure it's on whatever. You, re you can regurgitate the same stuff. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The first year of a content library is the difficult part where you're creating it from scratch. However, why not? <coughs> you can then start putting it out again. A testimonial that was put out this year can be put out next year and the year before and the year after that. You know, people don't remember. They're not looking and going, Whoa, that person said they were great two years ago. I'm going to check. Oh, look at that. They've used it before. No one has got that time. They're too busy doing this, looking through the rest of social media. So don't worry about putting stuff up. If you're shouting about an event, we were doing something with Fishguard Council uh, at about an event some time ago, and the event was on a certain date. Three weeks before, we posted uh, every other day. The two weeks before, we posted every single day about the event. Different things, why go, you know, parking, all that kind of stuff. And the week before, we posted two to three things every single day about the event. Literally, there were thousands of people there. And they said because of that, well, we looked at the traffic and it was pretty, it amplified the whole event. And it got more people to it because you were they were shouting about it. And they amplified, increased the frequency as they got closer to the day. So there's little things like that that you can do. And I know some of this takes time, but actually a content calendar is amazing. I used to sit down, my, my wife watched Downton Abbey on a Sunday night, and I used to sit down and do all my social media scheduling for the week in advance, Monday to Friday, uh, a week, oh, one a day on Facebook. You know, I was using all the platforms, and I used to do it in an hour myself while my wife was happy watching Downton Abbey. So you can do it really quickly and quite fast once you get into that, that groove of content. 
And you may find someone that someone's really knows lots about history stuff. And you go, I'll tell you what, can you give us just, just write down three for every single month? You know, it's not long. It'll probably take you a day to do all of them. At least we've got that arsenal of content that can go up there. You're also probably thinking why people will get bored of it and just un un will unfollow us because they're bored of our content, just pestering them all the time. 4% of your audience see anything. So the more you put up there, hopefully the more interaction you'll get and the more eyeballs will see it. So actually you posting three posts in 10 minutes, probably one will be seen by one of the people that follows you. So this, this really, this is the, the real kind of creme de month, the, the answer to it all. The, the grand national winner is a content calendar, uh, I find with social media is actually getting all the content together with your group and working on it that way. The other one is know your audience. I'm going to amplify this again. Know your audience, who they are, who are they? Why do they follow you? What do they want to see? It, it's really turning it around. It used to be advertising is ram it down their throats. Just tell them, just tell them, just tell them. No, no, no. Social media gives them a choice to turn off and not like you. So what do they want to see? Do they want to see, you know, try, try this content library with different um, content calendar with different stuff going up there and see what people say. Some people may say, oh, you're just, there's too much going up there. Say, okay, right, we'll dampen it down. We're just experimenting. You know, just, you need to, but you're not going to get that reaction by putting one post a week up there. If you start putting a, a post a day up there uh, or, you know, that kind of stuff. If you start amplifying it a bit more, you will get more interaction. So who are they? Are they are funny? You know, the information you're putting up there, is it funny? Is it informative? Authoritative niche? You know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and how can you be a bit different and stand out from the competitors? I suppose it's not really competitors. It's kind of how can you stand out and be a little bit... Why, why should someone follow you and not go actually unfollow? So a friend of mine, whenever he goes on holiday, he always does selfies. He's a selfie king. And it's always pictures of him, you know, him and his missus at a beautiful location. I want to see the location, not you two. So literally when he goes on holiday, there's a little three buttons on Facebook, which you click and you say, hide for two weeks. And I hide him for two weeks. So I don't want to see all these pictures. But if your information is good, they won't do that. You know, if it's different... Even if it's repetitive, you know, there's an event going on, here's a picture, historic question, trivial pursue, here's an, the same event going on. You know, it, it pads out all the rest of the stuff. They also see all the rest of the information from their friends as well. Some good content examples. I'm going to flick through these quickly. <clears throat> Something we do, we seasonalize all our logos. So, you know, Remembrance, uh, St. David's Day, uh, what else? Pumpkin, Christmas. So we, and this gets quite a good response. So all we've done, we've got a graphic guy just to, or Tom in our office just zazzed up our logo. Maybe get your logo and put a bit of holly on it for Christmas and put it up around November, December. Take it down for January. Turn your logo into an Easter egg later on. You know, it just makes that little bit of a difference. It's not same old logo. Nothing's changed. Um, the information that goes up this is uh someone's tea room over in cardiff a uh, colleague of mine um they had a kid they put pictures of their kid up even though she's doing cakes she still put pictures of kids up pictures of the cakes uh just done two months since we started it aren't we successful bragging about how successful she's been nothing wrong with that this is the kind of thing you need to do we're doing well let's do it jago tembi talking about you know there's a sale on lockdowns happened you know, this is how you can find out more about us. You know, we're not meeting physically now, but actually we're going to do a Zoom meeting every Thursday. Who wants to come to the Zoom meeting? Direct messages and we'll put you on the list. Um, content posts about, you know, uh, self-assessments or there's a certain day when certain things need to be picked up. There's certain things in all our, all our lives where it's always the same. Someone's birthday. Um, this is created in something called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Free of charge, you can create graphics in Canva, uh, free of charge, and it's a great bit of kit. Um, what other ones? So this is just other stuff newsletter. Why not sign up to our newsletter? So they're shouting about other stuff that they provide as well. Um, stories, Facebook stories with pictures. You know, that's not the best picture in the world, but it's all right. Nice, nice clouds, um, but it amplifies their message again. 
So think about stories, think about how to put them together uh, and learn how to do stories on, on things like Facebook and Instagram, if those are your weapons of choice. Facebook Live, uh, this is videoing you live, like now. I could video myself now presenting this workshop. Um, so you could actually do, uh, do a video live. It gets a lot of interaction very quickly. Um, someone's got to be on there dealing with it. It's an option. You may go, actually, we'll put that one to one side. Thank you very much, Angus. It's a bit too complicated. Let's do the easy ones first and see what happens. But write down Facebook Live or uh, Instagram Live and see, see it's an option to go forward. Facebook advertising. I, I know, you know, it, it, money isn't something that you've got washing around all over the place and you're all driving your Rolls Royces and all the rest of it. But it's an option. Um, you, if an event's happening where it's a money generator for you guys, maybe there's 20, 50 pounds in the, in the slush fund. You could drop it on Facebook advertising to advertise anybody. You could do a geographical area with um, where the, an age group in it. So only uh, men and women of the ages of, of 30 to 65 will see your advert. The advert will be posted between 8 and 10 at night. The person has to like... Um, uh, going on holiday in Torremolinos, you know, you, you could target that as a filter. Now you probably maybe only have one or two people on there, but th those are the options. I wouldn't myself boost a post. Boosting is Facebook's way of you just throwing money down the sink. I would set up an advert with a proper filter in there. And the link I put on here is a link where you can put this link in there, facebook.com forward slash ads library. Um, you can go on and find what, how other people are advertising. So you could go on there and put on, I don't know, Greenpeace, Amnesty International, uh, I don't know, Prostate Wales, all those kind of people. And you could see their ads to see how they do it. You know, this is research behind it. And those are, you could see what kind of message they put over. Just a thought I'm throwing out to you guys. Other good tips. <coughs> Your... Facebook account. Um, so at the moment, I think it was SolverCare, facebook.com forward slash SolverCare. Amazing. Easy to spell, easy to remember, all those kind of things. Something like Name Checker will allow you to put in, and I'll do it later on when I share my, in a minute, when I share my uh, screen. But you could put in SolverCare and see if all the other platforms are available with SolverCare on there. So in other words, Pinterest, uh, Twitter, YouTube, you, you could register them all free of charge. They're yours. You could use them when you want. So Pinterest, you could add some pictures in there, uh, all those kind of things. So it gives you that option. And this website allows you to check that kind of stuff. You can pin posts to the top of your... So if a post is really poignant, then you could pin it to the top of your profile for a week. So if something's really important, pin it to the top. If there's important updates... Uh, sloths are coming to, to Folly Farm, you know, we want lots of people coming, oh, no, temporary closed, all that kind of stuff. So pin important stuff to the top. And it's literally, if you hit those three little dots on here, they will go, th that will say pin to the top, and you go pin to the top. Tell you what, all you need to do to unpin it is hit those dots and it says unpin. Be brave, click these buttons, see what they do, see what functionality goes on. Scheduling posts, and I will show you scheduling posts, how to do it. Scheduling posts, you can schedule all your Facebook posts six months in advance. And I think you can do about 300. So literally, you could sit down and go, right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get together for a day. Let's do two months of social media posts and I'll leave you alone for a bit. You know, you could actually schedule all of this in advance and forget about it. And then you could go, right, there's a coffee morning going on. Let's take some pictures. Let's put them up there. There's here and now stuff. You're not sitting there going... We haven't posted for three months on Facebook. Let's post some, I'll take a picture, a really bad picture, with, and I'll write something really badly spelt with my fat thumbs, and I'll post it up there, I've done it. You know, you walk away from your phone now. Don't, schedule it in advance. It makes so, life so much easier. There are bits of software you can get as well so for scheduling. So Hootsuite is one. Uh, Buffer is another one. And another one that's, that's quite cheap is oneupapp.io. And these ones allow you to schedule, and I could, you could move these posts around then. So this one was on the 23rd of January. I could move it to the 25th of January because I think it's a better time. And around about 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock, 
you know, those kind of things. I could move it around. So it becomes a bit more of a science. And so scheduling software is Hootsuite, Buffer, or OneUp app. It's a bit of a mouthful. .io, because it's a, an investigation. It's a kind of it's a newfangled company. Have .io as, a, as a, their, their ending. Facebook advertising, already done that one. I'm going to move on. Some of you may not know, <coughs> but with Google, Google ads, you get, I think, and don't quote me on this, I think you get about, if you're a charity, I think you can claim about £10,000 a month worth of advertising free of charge off Google. Ten grand a month free of charge off Google. Now, we're doing it with a, uh, a prostate charity at the moment uh, in Wales. And we've done it for one month and we've sent, we've got their traffic, we've doubled their traffic basically. It hasn't cost them anything for the adverts. And the adverts, how these adverts work are, an advert will go onto Google, someone will click it and that money goes into Google's account. Now with charities, this is, they, Google give you an, a budget of a certain amount and they, they, they allow you to use that money free of charge. All you've got to do is get someone to actually set it up for you and, and run it all. So who is going to set up the Google ads? Who's going to run those adverts? It's, there is a period of work. There is a period of knowledge that's needed in this as well. But it's a sum of money that's not, not worth forgetting about. And if you can claim you're a charity, um, I don't know the full ins and outs. Mark did this with me, uh, with the, the company, the organization. But they, they double stuff. They, they've really amplified it and they've, they've Double the amount of people going to the website that they, they've hit. You can see all the stats going through all that kind of stuff. I know it's not social, but I thought I wanted to drop it in there. Measurement. <coughs> Facebook has insights in it. You can see how many people look at stuff, how many people have been through your site. And if you click on insights on the side of your, your system, it will, will show it. I'm going to flick through these and I'm going to go live and show you it as well. Insights will tell you, you know, what did they look at? Photos. It will tell you which post did the best. So this post here on the 7th of February did really well. It got lots of reach, lots of eyeballs. That's all. Just meant that someone did that and it went past their eyeballs. But it got a few hundred people looking at it and a little bit of engagement. So with Facebook and all of these platforms, they have insights in the background. It tells you the demographics of your audience. Who, who follows you? Is it uh, this one here is women between the age of 36 and 44. That tells me that the posts I need to put up need to fit with that demographic. If I start talking about um, other stuff, then it, it's that's not interested by these people, then they're, they're, that's going to turn them off. They're going to go somewhere else. The adverts all have stats as well. And also your website has stats. So your website, if you're going to drive people to your website, <clears throat> this will allow you to uh, see, is it working? In other words, if we're using Facebook and we're throwing people to the website, is it working? Are they going to the website? Are they staying on the website? It's like you going shopping in Tesco's and someone going, she's looking at the pasta, she's going for the sauce. You know, everything, every action that's taken within your Google, your experience on, in a digital environment is monitored. It's, it's all that sneaky beaky stuff that's going on. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to share another screen. Hopefully this is all okay. You can give me a thumbs up on the chat if you want to. Uh, and I'm going to share another screen, but it's not allowing me. Can't share, share it. Ah, here we go. I hope this is all relevant. I hope it's all making sense. I hope you're not baffling you. I realize this is a lot of information. I've got 14 minutes left. Let me open this up. <clears throat> so this is a company that does uh, behind the lens media. They do a lot of photos. He changes this images once a week. You can change this bit here to either send messages, test button. You can change this button to send you a message, fill in a questionnaire, all those kind of things. So clicking and, and poking each of these areas will give you different stuff to look at. And I would do a lot of that if I were you. Something that, I, that kind of winds me up a little bit is that people don't fill in this bit properly. 
the about us. And if I go to edit his page, now I work with this person, so <clears throat> that's why I've got this access. All I've done is gone edit page, it's got the name of the company, that's his handle, that's his description. Categories, you get three categories. Make sure you use those three categories. Put in content, whether you're on WhatsApp or not. Put in location. I realize that some of you don't have a location, but those that do, put it there. If you don't have a location, maybe put it in the middle of Solver Harbor just to entertain people. Hopefully they don't meet you there at high tide. Uh, hours of opening, no hours available with this guy. Whereas, you know, better to put your hours in there saying we're, we're around nine to five or we're around nine o'clock at night to 11 o'clock at night, all that kind of stuff. But fill it in. It doesn't take that long. It just needs filling in. The rest of the information, inbox you understand, notification you understand, <coughs> scheduling. Publishing tools I just clicked on. Publishing tools on here, and I cross my fingers waiting for the internet to start working. And with publishing tools, this allows me to schedule posts in advance, he says, while it's taking its time. Ah, that's what I like to see. So publish posts, it says create posts here. And what this will do, it'll say, uh, I don't want it to go on behind the, the Instagram account. I just want it to go on here and I can put cats sat on mat, keep it simple. Add a photograph, put a call to action in there. And then I can do the click down here, schedule post. This changes every time I do it. So I may look like I'm slick, but I have to kind of look fast. Uh, June, actually, I'll, I'll post cats out on Matt in July. I can't do 27th, July the 26th. So that's the latest. And I'm going to do uh, AM. Save. Done. Happy days. So I can schedule in advance. I can choose the day. I can choose the time. I can choose the message that goes out. I can add a photograph to it. And I can post that up. And it's all in advance. I would have a piece of paper next to you to make sure you've got the dates and know when you are. Otherwise you're going, God, I've done July already. So just this kind of stuff really helps your business, helps your organization get to that next stage by scheduling in advance. And you can go in and sort out the scheduled posts afterwards. You can start moving them around and managing them that little bit better. I'm just going to go back again. Come on, you can do it. Why are you going back? And what I want to do is just kind of show insights then, and insights will show your stats. Now, insights worked better on um, a desktop rather than an iPad. It limits what you can actually see. So what I've got on here is, there's the insights for him. It only does 28 days at a time, so you can make that go to 28 days. But what it will do, will tell you how many people have looked at his stuff. You know, this post here did really well on the 27th of March. What would I do? If that's a Thursday, let's say, I'm going to post again another Thursday at that time and see if I can get the same kind of interaction again. What did I do on here that was so good? Let's have a look at it. Let's analyze it. You can also follow other people. So this guy's a photographer. He follows all the other photographers in Pembrokeshire or West Wales. So you can see what they're doing. So this guy's done four posts and got 1,000, you know, engagements. He's done zero and got two. If as your uh, professional uh, cheats and plagiarizers, what would you do? You would click on this guy here and have a look to see what his four posts are and say, well, maybe I'll do that. So there's no rocket science here. It's a case of looking around. And what I would do with insights is start flicking through all of this. You can look through the people. You can look at audiences. His audience is mainly men, 45 to 54, uh, based around... Pembrokeshire or West Wales, Southwest Wales, completely Southwest Wales. Languages, not a lot. The languages is, is a bit weird because um, you may have your computer set to English USA uh, and you don't even realize, and it will say that there, but most of his traffic is local or South Wales orientated. There's lots of information in here. And what I would do is sit down maybe as a group, once a quarter, just look at it and say, right, let's have a look at, see how, it, how this is working. I'm going to quickly go on to Twitter because I haven't really talked about Twitter. Twitter's great for uh, finding 
uh, following other people. So we've got um, Pembrokeshire County Council. We can see who are they following. So you click on who are they following. So the following button. And this will show how many people, who do they follow? Are they any, are they interesting? You know, maybe the systems advice bureau, maybe we need to follow them. Maybe we need to follow local government challenge or, oh, this guy here seems a bit of a mover and shaker. I'll click on that. So think about, you know, who you want to follow as an organization. Notifications come in as normal uh, notifications, messages are direct. Uh, and then if you want to find stats in the same way, if you click on more, all I've done is click on more. And it has Media Studio or Analytics will do the same. And on Media Studio, it'll say when my audience is online, there's something called Insights in here. Uh, audience. And it tells me that Tuesday, around about two o'clock is a good time for me to post. If I post it on Thursday at four o'clock in the morning, no one's there. So it helps me. This is Twitter, by the way. And all I've done is I've gone to uh, more information, media studio, and then I've clicked on insights. What you really need to do, it's like driving a car. When you first sat in a car, you saw the wheel and you saw all the levers and went, sheesh, how am I going to do this? You did 12 lessons and you were a grandmaster at it and passed your test first time. Exactly the same with social media. You don't open Facebook and go, oh, it's easy. No, I would sit down and probably do half a day of learning, to be honest. Um, that, it just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Uh, the platforms. Let me just shrink this down a bit. I realise I'm short on time. Bring this down a bit. Cool. So, uh, I'm not going to do that. Google My Business. This is the bit where Google My Business shows. They've got a review, link to a website, telephone number, opening hours, um, and on R1, so I'm sitting up here at the moment, uh, we've got a whole load of reviews. We got, I don't know, 15 new bits of business because we, we got more reviews. But there is a posting area. So review, this is us, and then we post on here as well. How do you get this? If you look for Google My Business, set it all up, it works in the same way again. Uh, other good sites that are out there, Hashtagify will tell you the hashtags to use in Twitter or Instagram. So I'm just going to put Pembrokeshire in here. <clears throat> and this will give me the popular hashtags that people use. And a hashtag amplifies a message. So if I put in, even if I'm not, you know, we're based, you're based in Solva, so there's nothing wrong with putting hashtag Narbeth, Tenby, Find Your Epic, Carmarthen, Wales, uh, don't put, you put B&B, Holidays, put all of those in there, and those are popular related hashtags. So you can actually check the popularity as well um, and see which ones are really kind of going somewhere. And even though you're based in Solver, there's nothing wrong with putting hashtags St. David's. Um, lots of people look for it, therefore you're, you're piggybacking their stuff. Um, Google Analytics. So with your website, you have something called Google Analytics. It should be free. It is free of charge. You need to go to your web developer if you don't have any information on it. But this tells me how many people have come to my website through a social connection. Acquisition channels, social, 11% of this traffic. This is an outdoor center up in North Wales. I couldn't really show you a, a charity, I'm afraid, uh, because of data protection. But this tells me how many people came to the website, where did they come from? Oh. Honestly, it will show you where it's come from. Oh, okay, so it's causing a bit of hassle. But your Google Analytics, if you go through it, It'll show you whereabouts everything comes from and you're driving people from your website. Then. And it just makes, it makes life so much easier because you know then you're actually making a difference rather than making it up, I suppose. So back onto this again. So Google Analytics will say that Facebook's brought this in, Twitter's brought this in, LinkedIn's brought this in. And just gives you some kudos, I suppose. So you're lucky, that's the end. Hopefully I have 
landed with you with enough information to be dangerous. I realize there's other platforms out there. I realize there's Pinterest, Instagram. They all work in the same way. Content, engagement, con and, and you managing it. They all work in that kind of a format. Um, they all have their own little kind of buttons, but they all, you, they all have the same buttons. Create a post, create a post. Instagram's photo orientated. Um, Pinterest is photo orientated. <clears throat> Once you've mastered one system, they all work very similar in a very similar way moving forward. So my final bit is the outcomes. Hopefully you've got five things to learn. Hopefully you've got maybe 24 kilograms of notes. No, uh, hopefully you've got a few things to do. And I suppose my parting comment before I go to, to questions, I'm happy to do you know, verbal questions to all of you and stay on that a little bit longer, but be brave, press buttons. It's not gonna break it, press buttons. If you send a message, it shouldn't be sent. Take it out. You can delete it. Don't be scared of pressing buttons. Have fun. And I class fun as finding a quirky message to put up, and it does well. If lots of people like it, that gives you that gooey feeling inside. Experiment. Put different stuff up there. Just trial it. Um, it's really getting out there and putting it. Make it interesting. Don't just think of it as a, as a, a, um, a city council notice board. You know, you guys can have a bit of fun saying, why not volunteer with us? This is why you should volunteer with us. This is why you should be working with us. These are the benefits. Look what we've done. Aren't we great? This is the money we've raised. Um, it gobsmacked me. Um, my father-in-law is in the Penknife Club, and I don't know your thoughts on them, but um, it's gobsmacked me how much money those guys have raised. It's kind of, it's all of this kind of stuff. It's kind of, all of you need to kind of think, right, let's be arrogant for a bit. Why are we so great? And, and maybe you take the mick out of someone saying, well, we're all great because so-and-so so jokes is re are really good. So that's me. Thank you very much. Hopefully I've landed you with two hours of information. Hopefully you've got a bucket of ice to put your head in after. Hopefully my jokes haven't been too bad. I'm going to unshare the screen and I'm happy to uh, field any chat, either in the chat area or verbal chat uh, for 10 minutes if you want to, if you've got any questions. And I'm sure, sorry there's a lot of information, but I'd rather give you all the information from the start uh, and then you can go away and go, right, this is what Angus said, have a look at this. So you can go in and have a look at that kind of stuff. Um, and it just makes more sense. Remember, there are platforms like uh, YouTube that can show you all the bits and bobs out there. Any questions, anyway? <laughs> Silence. So, I, I have a question. Um, I've successfully managed to move uh, a page of mine um, on Facebook to another owner. However, I'm encountering problems transferring ownership of an Instagram page. Is it possible to transfer ownership of an Instagram page or do you have to close it down and then reopen on your own account? I... I'd have to say I believe so. The difficulty with Instagram and Facebook at the moment, they're moving everything onto something called Business Suite. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Business Suite is, is they, they're kind of still, they've been doing it for the last kind of three to six months. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, the whole, the whole of their system on how they're moving it because it, it's just changing the system. I believe you can is all I can say. What <laughs> I would do, and um i haven't done it for such a long time i was talking to one of the a company the other day about merging facebook and literally every time even even the it guy that i work with he says all i'm good at is actually searching google um if you okay. search google there will be a forum or a video in there that will tell you can i can i add more than one administer administrator to an instagram account make sure the news that you read and watch is three months old Anything more than that is literally Trinosaurus Rex was running around because it moves so fast. I literally, I try and only read stuff that's a month old because it'll give you indication on how to do that. Um, if you get stuck, happy, send me an email, Angus at WebAdept. I'm happy to have a look at it and send you, send you some links to some articles that I would find. Um, that's the best way. And literally every issue I find on, in, on any of this social stuff, that's where I, that's my go-to. Literally, I, I try and do it and I, I get as far as I can. And then I go back to, to, to Google YouTube or go back to Google and I start searching, how do I, what's the best way? 
Um, and sometimes it's not possible. There'll be forums on there with everyone shouting and screaming. You've just got to skim read all that lot to get the, the, the real gem in there. Okay. Thanks for that. No problem. Any other questions? Yeah, Angus Wood, can you recommend, um, I don't know, a, pro a program or a plugin that you can use with Instagram to allow you to put up non-phone photographs? I have an enormous amount of non-phone photographs and it was my greatest disappointment to find with Instagram, he seems to be totally focused on phone photos. Oh, non-phone, oh, uh, windowed. So you want to send it from your, 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 um, from your desktop? Essentially, you, yeah. You want to post yeah. from the, you want to post on Instagram from your desktop. Okay, so yeah. you can you can do that through um, Windowed on a Windows a Windows computer. So look for Win Window ED at the end, and you can manage it from there. Instagram is is Insta. It is a phone. Um, the only way I've kind of worked it out is by going on putting onto something like a Google Drive, and then you access the Google Drive from your phone. Um, is is one way I've done it or I've had to move and drag images around. But windowed is one that, that can do that. Uh, I believe also some of the scheduling ones like uh, Hootsuite and Buffer, all those kind of ones, scheduling, uh, one up app can do it. Uh, you can schedule from there and then manipulate from there. It is a bit of a pain in the neck when all your pictures are on your computer. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the only route I can do, I can think of. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, is, is it worth when you're doing posts on Facebook and Twitter actually tagging people? So we, you know, I do quite a lot of um, at the end of the at the end of the post, put at PCC, at Halza, at BCT, at WCPA, um, and I'm not really sure I'm getting anywhere with it, and I'm wondering if I if it's worth bothering. As long as, as long as it shows up as they're genuine, yeah. And, and the real pain is you have to, you've got to research where they are. And I, I sometimes have a, a notepad where I've got all their handles in. Yes, I would. I even have a notepad where I've got all the hashtags I use for certain posts. So I copy and paste and then plagiarize as, as a, to make it applicable. So yes, I would. Because in in the social media community we should or they what they should do is if, if they should get notification and they should then like it share it and go yeah for my brand thank you very much you're good too all that kind of stuff whether they do it is another question it comes down to the organization and how on it they are um is, is the real answer on that one yeah i think small organizations do but you know you're trying it on a bit if, if you think um, Welsh Government wants to hear about everything together for changes doing but you know some, some of them might be interested. <laughs> the, the Welsh Government is hilarious because I, I, I work for like Accelerated Growth Programme all this kind of stuff I've got lots of people that follow me on Twitter I'm, I'm not bragging but it's a case of in my contract I'm not allowed to say that I work for Welsh Government which could actually benefit them they don't ask they don't ask for amplification from any because they want to control it and it's a lot better to say use social media, but these are our rules. Please don't swear, be genuine and be, be trustworthy. That's all. And we're all human beings. We wear big boy trousers. Um, that's the difficulty I find with the Welsh Assembly with their social media policy. Um, it'd be worth as you as organisations having a social media policy, just in case someone goes a little rogue. Uh, at least you could say, well, on our policy, it says that you shouldn't use certain words, uh, that kind of stuff. It's worth, because... There's nothing worse than someone go, oh, I didn't realise. You go, oh, okay. It's like, it is like running a business again. Um, and it just protects you uh, by having a policy of some sort. If you looked for social media policy for a charity online, I bet your dollar there is one there that you could copy and paste, plagiarise and make it your own. So you don't have to write it from scratch. Just have a look on Google. There will be, there's a great system called Simply Docs, which has all the legal stuff in there. Uh, um, which is free of charge. Simply, simply dash docs. I think it's 35 quid for the year. You get all the terms and conditions, everything like that. Um, but you can get social media policies from there. If you wanted a free one, you could probably, you will be able to find one online, copy, paste, plagiarize. Uh, don't duplicate someone else's. Um, nothing worse than leaving their brand in there. Gives the game away. Anybody else? No, I keep bamboozled. 
I hope I have, and I hope I've given you lots of information and thought, food for thought. And um, yeah, can I, can I can I just ask yes. if you are if you're doing a who do we want to reach? What are we about? Uh, why do we want to reach them? What's the purpose of what we're doing? Um, is there there doesn't seem to be a sufficient distinction between Twitter and Instagram and the other things that you mentioned for you to choose one? Have you are you inevitably doomed to have to go on them all even if the people that you want to reach are a small group um, in and around uh, Salva or in and around Pembrokeshire if you don't want to reach the world um, is, is there a group that is better is there a, a media that is better than the others for that I would ask I would ask your group I would get as many people as possible together and ask them say what platforms do you use Mm -hmm. um, if that would be the first thing I would do, just as an experiment or a loose conversation between six people, saying, what do you use? Um, and you go, actually, I've got a hidden pleasure of, of looking through, I don't know, Twitter, uh, Donald Trump's profile. Um, I don't know. You, I, I would do that to start with. Um, I would also, uh, I, would, I personally have trying to bring everything back to, I use LinkedIn and Twitter a lot. And the rest of them, I, I, I kind of, I entertain a little bit, but I have to because I run a digital agency. But yeah. I would I would keep it as a minimum of two. Um, so maybe WhatsApp and Facebook may be a good one. You could use WhatsApp for the for the management group and Facebook for communicating with the rest. But then you may find that people come back and say, actually, I like Instagram because I love the pictures that go up there. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it, it's that, and, and us as humans, you know, a picture says a thousand words. Humans want to see pictures and videos. We don't want to read text. Um, and the other part is that you've got to put your preconceived ideas in the bin. If everyone says Instagram and you go, no, I'm going to use Facebook, then you're talking to yourself in a room, um, which is happened so often business or organizations say, we, I use Facebook. Everyone else uses Facebook. That's what I'm going to have. They may have Facebook, but it doesn't mean they use it. Mm. If everyone uses Instagram, then you're just going to have to bite the bullet and go, right, I better be good at taking pictures. I better be good at posting up. What's the ethos and philosophy of Instagram? It's posting quite a lot of pictures, putting funny things on, doing stories, using the stories element and using multiple hashtags. So I'm going to research the hashtags. I'm going to collect lots of images together. And I'm going to find a system like OneUp app where I can schedule it all in advance. So I don't have to go... Eight o'clock, the alarm's gone. I better post a, a picture. You know that kind of stuff. It's that management that takes the the real pain out of all of this. And then set notifications on your phone. So if anybody messages you, you know a me message comes up. And it doesn't mean well, I'm having dinner. Leave it alone. I'm not going to. And after dinner, you go on there and go right. Okay, I'm going to have ten minutes, and I'm just going to do all the messaging. It's quick and easy. Doesn't take long. Um, you know, work isn't nine to five. But you can still set your own rules of saying, no, I'll have a siesta between one and two and then everyone else can get lost. Um, you're setting your own boundaries and tell people quite bluntly. No, I don't. Someone may say, oh, I messaged you 30 minutes ago. I say, OK, yeah, I'll get on it. I, I look at it. I say, honestly, I'll get back to you. I normally get back to people within a day or two. And they'll go, oh, OK. And that just manages their expectations. They're not expecting someone sitting there waiting for your message. Oh, someone's messaged me. Let's do it. It's that side of it. Which, yeah. Thank okay, you. no problem. Molly, no, I mean, thank you. Thank Molly, you for the talk. Lena, I it. Lena and I were just messaging, and we wondered with the the two yearly survey that Solve Care does. Why don't we ask people mm -hmm. how they'd like to be communicated with? You know, try and find out yeah, which yeah, platforms they use, yeah. and then we could target it. Yeah. Um, also, ask them what do they want to see on it. Ask them mm -hmm. how often do they use it. Three questions is good enough. You know, what do they want to see? Um, you could ask them if you if you if you want. They may say you, you're, the stuff you put up there is rubbish. So you've just got to take it on the chin. You know, you put your, your head above the parapet if you ask that question. Say, what do you think of our Facebook group? Or what's your platform? What do you think of our Facebook? What do you want to see? Let them influence. Yeah. If they take ownership, then it's a social yeah. thing. It's ownership. Yeah, but if but if if what you're if if what you're about is checking up what you already know from two lots of surveys and finding out what you still don't know. Um, it's a different sort of question that you've got to ask them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah we'd have to work on that, but we could. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have, have a chat in the RME group. We've got a meeting next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else? No? 
Okay, well, brilliant. Angus, I know it was only two hours, but I feel like I've had about six hours of content. So thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and I've been good. I've just posted, used the hashtag and said I've written six pages of notes, which is true. <laughs> I've got three. I've got so, three. That one, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. And thanks, yes, thank you for everyone for attending as well. Thank um, you. It was really good. Yeah, it was. Thank and you. Hope, hope you don't mind. I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll put, once I've tidied up the recording, I'll pop that on our website and uh, in the next oh. couple of weeks so people can have a recap, which I think could be quite useful. On yeah, something. Indeed, yeah. Um, and if you don't mind as well, I'll send over a, a, just a little mini feedback um, email to you all, but I'd be grateful if you could respond to that as well for us. So um, thank you again, Angus, and see you all very soon. Okay. Thanks, Marie. Bye now. Bye now. Bye. Bye.